All right, we're going to get started. We've got three presenters today, so we want to stay on time. Our first presentation is by Julia Bird. She's going to tell us about her experience in DC at the Mid-Year Forum. Hello, everyone. So we just wanted to give everyone here in Utah who didn't have a chance to go out to DC an update on what happened and what we talked about at the Mid-Year Forum. Um, so as a resident, there's kind of this advocacy in ambassador program where they support, there's about 150 residents that all get together, which is kind of a cool um, setting for all of us to kind of reconvene. You meet a lot of people and meet people that you met on the, or see people that you met on the interview trail, but learn about some current legislative issues and then, you know, how going forward in this career you can really try to make a difference and be involved in some of the bigger decisions that impact your daily practice and really important um, issues to be involved in. So, you know, advocacy is just another way for us to kind of have our patients' interests in mind, be the voice for our patients, and see on the kind of ground level what issues are at hand and bring it to DC or other <laughs> legislative or uh, you know lawmakers and really say these are the things that in theory maybe seem good but in practice aren't really working so it's an important thing for us because we're the only people that are in this unique position to have this voice for the patients and so the advocacy ambassador program and the mid-year forum are a collaboration between the American Academy of Ophthalmology, the State Ophthalmology Societies, the different training programs in the ophthalmic subspecialty and specialized interest societies. So there's the Congressional Advocacy Day, which is um, kind of the first day where all of the different state representatives go and meet with their various members of Congress. Um, and the House representatives and discuss issues. We met with Senator, well, we didn't meet face to face with the senators or the representatives, but we met with staffers from Senator Hatch's office um, and uh, from the House representatives, Chris Stewart and Jason Chaffetz, and then, um, and I'm for blanking on the other senators, Mike Lee. We <laughs> know that's, yeah. <laughs> So one, the, few, the issues that were really kind of the main messages that we brought to the table and talked to them about was the kind of the big one that a lot of people are upset about or kind of um, that really have the potential to impact a lot of people in ophthalmology is the CMS funding of Medicare. So they made these massive reimbursement cuts for glaucoma and retina procedures. And the problem is that they CMS did this really outside of the realm of their, um, really not within their rules of how they are judging and kind of uh, qualifying procedures. So they kind of just went in and made these cuts really without any sort of background or and it, it just randomly in some sense and didn't follow their own rules, which is a problem going forward that there is no kind of set way that we'll go about making these cuts or valuing procedures. So it's kind of a big issue, not only for the patient, for the providers that do these procedures, but also just moving forward how our time and our procedures will be valued. And ophthalmology has gotten faster, has gotten more efficient, but there is, especially in some of the glaucoma procedures, I mean, these are very complicated surgical procedures. And the follow-up and post-operative care is also you know, quite complicated. So that's a big issue that um, we're trying to, you know, that we brought to the attention of the uh, representatives. And some offices were more kind of in tune with what was going on and versus others. It was kind of interesting to see the difference in the uh, different representatives' offices about, you know, in terms of the staffers' knowledge and kind of how up-to-date they were on everything. The other <laughs> big issue, too, is the meaningful use and kind of how we can make this really much better and not such a penalizing um, thing going forward that, you know, for people 
doing in a kind of ophthalmic settings or small offices, that it can be really, really difficult. We were with Dr. Matt Weed, who has a practice in Provo, and he had some you know, daily examples of how he's gone through every step of the meaningful use. He kind of has a small practice and basically got a letter in the mail saying, you didn't complete it. No answers why you're getting cut this much. So these are kind of issues that affect a lot of practicing ophthalmologists. Um, other, other kind of things that we brought to the table were continued funding for vision research through the National Eye Institute and the Division of Defense, and then truth in advertising, which has been one for many years, but a, on a federal level, so just saying, you know, surgery really needs to be done by surgeons. and just being um, honest about what training people have and how, you know, really that that's in the best interest of all the patients. And then also there was uh, another act, kind of a talking point about improving contact lens safety for consumers. So just companies that are these kind of massive contact lens producers that they don't necessarily have standards in terms of, you know, how uh, when their contact lenses expire, how they're getting the prescriptions to patients contacting ophthalmologists and saying, you know, is this prescription acceptable? And just there's a lot of things that they could do better to make the contact lens um, kind of uh, world a little bit better for the patients. And then the other um, kind of part of it was talking about how, you know, yes, we can go out and talk, but a lot of times there are, it does take money to fight some of these things, and the big thing in ophthalmology has been kind of scope of practice, and on individual state levels, there have been kind of some conflicts between surgery, you know, surgeons by surgeons, surgery by surgeons, and that's been, been a big issue, but Basically, there's a surgical scope fund, OPTPAC, and then state eye packs, and so kind of talked about those. And, you know, I think going there and seeing how what DC is run, it becomes very clear that lobbyists and money and all of this actually is kind of what makes it run for better or for worse. And so um, it's important to be involved. And so thanks to the University of Utah and Moran for having me. Made it kind of quick because we have a lot of other presentations. But does anyone have questions or questions about the issues that were kind of addressed there? I, um, I, I just have a comment. So yeah. the, you may or may not be aware, but there were pretty significant cuts to glaucoma and retina this year. And it's interesting because even the Retina Glaucoma Societies, also uh, the Academy, they, they're aware that uh, those procedures are overvalued. These are their kind of bread and butter surgical procedures. And what happened here is really interesting. Normally, CMS, when they make cuts, they look at two things. They look at time a procedure takes, and then they also look at complexity. And in this case, it was sort of end of the fiscal year where they had to basically, you know, not necessarily a bad thing, but kind of meet a quota of cuts. And so uh, what they did for the retinal glaucoma procedures, they purely cut based on the amount of time it takes. They didn't take into account uh, any of the complexity. So, you know, a trabeculectomy, for instance, with the you know incredible amount of post-op visits compared to other surgeries, um, that ended up just being, you know, cut the same way that you know you would cut something like you know re removing a, a simple skin tag, uh, and and that that was really the main issue. It wasn't so much that there is a cut because we we, we do recognize just like early on in cataract surgery, as cataracts became more efficient. Um, you know, there was this golden age that the, the reimbursements were still quite high, even though the, the procedure itself um, was, was increasing in its efficiency. So that, that's, that was really um, kind of an interesting insight into that funding. And then, and then also just, just a comment on meaningful use. So all of the, uh, there, there are currently three different um, kind of incentive uh, ways for physicians to either make more money, get more reimbursement from Medicare, or uh, alternatively now starting to be penalized uh, if you're not participating. And they're all now coming under a single umbrella, theoretically, uh, where they're, they're doing away with these three different um, you know, 
what ways to get more reimbursement and then that's all coming in under MIPS and MACRA and so if you do see little bits coming out about that it's worth familiarizing yourself with the you know the new acronyms and also the new requirements so anyway th thank you for yeah. that was wonderful thank you okay